Hello, welcome once again to Leto's Law. You know, a couple of days ago I put up a video where I talked about the fact that there are laws, there are regulations, there are statutes, there are codes, and how many of those words all mean the same thing. So, you know, you can't say, well, I'm allowed to speed because that's part of the motor vehicle code and codes aren't laws. Well, in that setting, codes are laws. And so we talked about that in a previous video. But I've had several people approach me since then and say, Steve, what about um, policies? Policies. Are policies law? And, you know, that's an interesting question because you'll never hear about somebody getting arrested for a policy violation. Uh, there has to be something that's enforceable for you to get in you know, a situation where you're afoul of the law. So it's usually a law, a statute, a code, could be an ordinance, and it could also be a regulation if the regulation has the effect and power of law behind it. So you know, it depends on that. But generally speaking, those are the, the situations where there's a legal thing that you have got to abide by. And so the question, like I said, is what about a policy? And, you know, I had a discussion with somebody about this recently via email. And, you know, the interesting thing is I've never heard of anybody claiming that policy is a law in and of itself. I have, however, heard of policies affecting the implementation of laws. And so I guess that's the real point of this is that let's suppose that you are driving an automobile in America illegally on a public roadway. You have a driver's license and everything. And you're driving along, and the speed limit's 50 miles per hour. That would be set most likely by your state's vehicle code. In fact, that's what it's called in Michigan. is the Michigan Motor Vehicle Code, and there'd be a, a, a thing in there about speed limits. And so if you exceed the speed limit in your vehicle, a police officer can write you a ticket for speeding. Okay, And that would be a violation, like I said, of, of a code which has the force of law in Michigan. Now, here's where a policy might play into that. Uh, as you might imagine, 50 miles per hour being the speed limit, if you drove 51 miles per hour, a police officer could give you a ticket and say you were speeding. You were exceeding the speed limit. But most people look at it and go, by one mile per hour? And then you get into this issue about how accurate is the device or the method that you use to measure my speed. If you did it with a radar gun, that's one thing. You did it with a laser, that might be another thing. But if you paced me, and you said I was exceeding the limit by one mile per hour, then we start getting this iffy thing about, you know, what's the margin of error with your methodology. So most people would just think as a practical matter, you wouldn't write a ticket to somebody doing one mile per hour over the speed limit. I can tell you right now, I've seen tickets written for three over. And even that is running into a problem with the margin of error in many cases. But the point is, but the reason they don't write tickets for one and two over or three or four over sometimes is more or less a policy. It's a policy, meaning that they just, that's generally how they do it. It might not be written. It might not even necessarily be spoken in that sense, but that's a policy. And, and, and you know, if, if some department wanted to raise some revenue, they could just announce and say, guys, um, instead of, you know, pulling people over at 10 over, let's start pulling them over at one over. And just start writing tickets and making money. And, and they could make money that way. And they could do that by changing their policy. They didn't change the law. They just changed the way that they were implementing or enforcing the law. And that's policy. Another example of policy, and again, it's going to be a traffic example, is that, you know, I've talked about before how there's, in many states, a basic speed law. And the basic speed law says that regardless of the speed limit, regardless of the speed limit, you must always operate your motor vehicle in a manner in which it is safe considering the conditions at the time you're operating the vehicle. So if the speed limit is 65 miles an hour and there's an ice storm and there's cars spun out everywhere, doesn't mean you can go zipping down the freeway at full speed. And, and, and you might say, well, you know, I, I think I can do it. <laughs> doesn't matter. Police officer's gonna look at that and go, you are driving too fast for the conditions even though you've not broken the actual speed limit. Now, there is a law that says that, okay? There's the basic speed law. And the basic speed law says that you cannot drive in, you know, in, a, in a manner that is unsafe for the conditions. Now, here's the interesting thing. And I think I've told this story before, but a friend of mine got a ticket uh, for basic speed law violation uh, during a snowstorm not too long ago here in Michigan. And... He was driving in a vehicle that had four-wheel drive, was jacked up, had big tires and wheels on it, and ran really, really well in the snow. 
and he made the mistake of passing a police officer in a marked car. Even though he was not speeding, the police officer pulled him over. And my friend said, I'm curious, why'd you pull me over? The cop says, you shouldn't be driving that fast in these conditions. And my friend said, look at the vehicle I'm in. I'm just driving down the road. Uh, I'm probably safer in my vehicle at my speed than you are in your vehicle at your speed. He didn't say that, but that's a thought process. And the police officer wrote him a ticket for that. So I went into court on that ticket. And uh, this is the argument I've made more than once where I went up to the prosecutor and said, look, you know, my, my client got this ticket for violation of the basic speed law. And he was pulled over simply because he was driving faster than the officer thought was prudent at that time. And here's the problem. How, 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 how do we define what prudent is? Or how do we define what safe conditions are considering the environment? That, that's so subjective that it's extremely common that many police officers and many prosecutors don't consider it really to be good policy to write a ticket for violation of the basic speed law if nothing bad happened, okay? So you're driving along under the speed limit, but in conditions that are not ideal, but you managed to get where you're going. Get out of your car, shut the car off, go inside. You made it home safely. Didn't fishtail, didn't hit anything, didn't run anybody over, no collisions, didn't put it in the ditch. You, you got it home. And there's, there's obviously a common sense argument there that you got where you were going without any trouble. You must have been able to do that safely because you did. Okay? You know, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, that, that's, you, you got there. So in the case of my friend who got the ticket, I went up to the prosecutor and I said, you know, this is kind of an unusual case. I said, because my client was just driving along and the cop pulled him over. There's no ticket. There's no accident. There, I mean, there's no accident. There's no collision. There's, there wasn't a ditch, no fishtailing, no nothing, no spinning of the tires. I, I said, I said it, it strikes me as, as this is not the occasion where this ticket makes any sense. And the prosecutor agreed to reduce it, and my client still had to pay something. But the point is that that, that appears to be more of a policy issue, uh, that, that it would make sense if you're out driving around on a snowy day and you put it in a ditch. If a cop's in a bad mood, he might say, I'm going to give you a ticket for violation of the basic speed law. You must have been driving too fast because you put it in a ditch, okay, or something. So... That's what I think is a better explanation of the policy. But the policy there is not the law. The policy is simply what rules they have internally for when they apply or when they actually enforce certain laws. And there are many other examples of that where you're going to see, you know, a situation where they'll say, well, we tend to arrest people only if this happens, but not if this happens, even though technically speaking, there might be a violation of the law prior to that. So that's really the issue. Policy in and of itself is not going to be a law. You can't enforce a policy with the power of law unless there's a law underneath there that you are using a policy to decide how you apply the law. Now, I, I know what your next question is going to be, though, is what if they're applying the law through some wacky policy that in and of itself is a problem? And that could be. You know, As you can imagine, your police department could not have a policy that says, uh, we pull over all people of one race, but not of another race. Or we, we ticket people of one gender, but not of the other gender. Uh, or, you know, we, we, we ticket people in expensive cars, but not inexpensive cars. Or vice versa. That, that would be an inappropriate policy. And that policy might be illegal if you prove it existed. But again, like I said, policy, generally speaking, is not the law, but it's the application, the way it's applied. The other question I have that was similar to this that somebody asked me, and I've seen these signs, and it's kind of funny because it hadn't occurred to me until somebody pointed it out. But they said that they were driving along one day, and they saw a sign by the side of the road that said, no dumping by order of the chief of police. No dumping by order of the chief of police. <laughs> the person asked and said, what right does the chief of police have to order people to do or not do anything that's different than what the law says? And the interesting thing there is the chief of police probably does not have the right to just make up laws and print up signs. Otherwise, you know, he could put up a sign that says, you know, uh, you know, I, I own this or I'm doing this or don't do that. And he just make up stuff. Obviously, the chief of police does not have that kind of legislative power. However, if there is a law on the books and suppose there's a law that says no dumping, you know, by order of, you know, the local municipal ordinance, okay, where you live, 
Moose Knuckle, Alaska, has an ordinance that says you cannot dump household refuse by the side of the road. And they put up a sign that says no dumping, pursuant to, and they put an ordinance citation there. You know, Moose Knuckle compile laws, so that'd be like M K C L, and then a bunch of numbers and dashes and numbers and points and so on. And and the question then, of course, is do people respond to that sign as well or as appropriately as they would if the sign said instead, no dumping by order of the chief of police. Now, here's the thing. They might not even have to post the sign at all if there is a law that says you cannot dump household refuse alongside of the road. So obviously they post the sign was a problem and the sign itself is not what makes it illegal to dump there. The law does that. So the question is, what does a sign do? And you say, well, a sign puts people on notice that they're not supposed to dump stuff there. But remember that ignorance of the law is no excuse. You're supposed to know the laws, and you're supposed to behave legally as best you can. And so then the question becomes, what purpose does a sign serve? And the sign is really just a warning to people, let people know, by the way, don't forget, you're not allowed to dump here, especially because people are probably dumping, and it's probably why they put the sign there. So then if you're following this train of thought as far as I've dragged you so far, you realize that the sign is more effective if it says, by order of the chief of police, than if it says, by order of the Moose Knuckle Municipal Code, blah, 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 blah. And then, of course, someone's going to say, well, I dumped some stuff there because I thought the police chief had no power. <laughs> Not realizing that there's a code. And they're going to say, of course, we put the sign up because people are ignoring the fact that there's a code. They've been ignoring the code for years. So when you see the sign that says, by order of the chief of police, that's not where the law comes from, uh, unless you've got a really strange municipality where they actually empower the chief of police to just make up his own rules and laws. I, I've yet to see that, but if you have it, present it to me, I'll take a look at it. But generally speaking, what they're doing there is they're trying to put up a sign that people will actually respond to. It's kind of like you put up a sign that says, you know, no trespassing. Yeah, you get one response. When you put up the sign that has the gun pointed at you as you approach the sign, and it says, you know, nothing on this property is worth dying for, that sign is just basically giving the same person the same warning. Okay, no trespassing, okay, or nothing here is worth dying for. We're just trying to get a message across to somebody to let them know that, you know, you don't want to do this. Uh, I've pointed out to people before that no trespassing is actually redundant. You're never allowed to trespass. If you're allowed to trespass, it wouldn't be trespassing. But that's another story altogether. So, Laws, statutes, codes, ordinances, all of those things that are enforceable because they are on the books somewhere passed properly and put into law and acted into law. However, policy in and of itself, generally speaking, that's something a department comes up with. A police department has their policies. And the policy is more on how they enforce or how they choose to enforce a particular statute, code, ordinance, or law. So policy in and of itself is not the law. And yes, the sign is by order of the chief of police, uh, that's really not what's going on there literally, but they're just trying to make the sign work. So at least that's my thought. Questions or comments, put them below. Otherwise, talk to you later. Bye-bye.